Well, welcome everyone. Uh, this week, um, we are talking about the law of light and the art of inquiry. And you have a personal creed document that has kind of like two parts, kind of like 1A and 1B. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, but uh, the law of light basically says your ans the answers to your pressing questions and needs are out there. And the art of inquiry is the capacity, the ability, the talent of being able to get answers to your questions. So let me just ask a couple questions of you guys as you are, you can do it in the chat or you can uh, share with me. Uh, just open up your mic. Um, how many of you are still largely undecided about your future career path? I see some smiles. Anybody still a little bit undecided about where you're going to be down the road? Spencer says, I am, and Melanie says she is. Definitely for Michael. Okay. So Samuel, you're gonna have to talk to me, Samuel, on this one. If you're brave enough to, please do. He says, I wasn't until two weeks ago. Samuel, can you talk to me about that? Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. So just, um, I always wanted to go into orthodontics. That's always something I've wanted to do. I'm like, that is a perfect career for me. And I was talking to an orthodontist and they said, yeah, there's only, you literally not like kind of figuratively, but you literally have a top of your dental school class where they don't accept you. Don't worry and about it. Interesting. I don't want to be a dentist. I think that would be super boring. Yeah. But orthodontics, I do want to do. And I'm like, well, I don't want to go through okay. four plus years of school to not get the job I want and then be stuck in a job that I hate. So I'm kind of stuck there. Yeah. So what do you do? What What are you thinking now? Uh, it's still my game plan, but I'm starting to look around for other options. I've thought about going more, um, maybe like marine biologist of some sort, just throwing out ideas. But okay, good. Now Whitney says thank you. So Whitney says running out of time to figure it out. Whitney, what do you think? <laughs> Can you talk to me about that? Yeah. So. I started out doing nursing. By the way, I said Whitney, Whitley, I'm sorry. Yes, really. No, you're fine. I respond to all of it. <laughs> anyway, so I started out, I had like three semesters worth of prereqs for nursing, uh -huh. and I decided it kind of wasn't for me, and I have basically spent the rest of my time just taking all the foundations classes because I haven't decided what I want to do, right. and I'm right. running out of classes to take. Okay. So I've recently become interested in interior design, though. So I'm thinking of maybe taking a couple classes. Yep. Um, but if I if I can't figure it out, then I pretty much would just graduate with generals, yeah. with, with just like an associates, and yeah, we'll see what happens. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So let me. Uh, this is this is a topic that. Um, I teach this class, and I'm not an expert in many things, but this is my day job. My day job is the director of the Career Center at BYU-Idaho. And so my goal is to help students land their dream jobs. Well, that's tricky because what is your dream job? So I don't have a slide for this, but, but there are three kinds of jobs that you can have. There is a job. Uh, a job is something, we've all had jobs, right? When I was at BYU-Idaho, I was early morning custodian. I mowed lawns. I worked as a reading tutor. I worked in the bookstore. I had those kind of jobs. I didn't hate any of them, but I didn't love any of them either. It was just, I needed to pay my tuition and eat. Most people end up in a career. A career is a job. You know someone's in a career. If you talk to somebody and you said, well, how's your job? And they said, it's all right. It's okay. They don't love it. They don't hate it. Some of them are counting down the years to retirement. Well, where we all want to get to is what we call a calling. A calling is a job that you love, that you are passionate about, that you would do for free, right? Now, getting to that is the challenge, right? 
Uh, I have some friends who said they had a company called the Talent Catalyst. And they said, most of you knew what your calling was when you were eight. So can someone tell me, what was your, what would you, if someone asked you, what do you want to be when you grow up when you were eight, what would you say? Right? Most of us knew what it was when we were eight. Right? But then we get all sorts of advice and directions and they're going to steer you this way and you might maybe want to do this. Um, and what we're going to talk about for the next few minutes, then I'm going to show you some examples on the assignment, is the value of having mentors in your life. The value of having someone that you can ask who knows you well enough that you can ask the questions I'm struggling with. Let's use Whitley as an example. Uh, nursing at dead end, thinking about maybe and wh where are you going to go? So you get the advice that you need. Um, and we're going to talk about that in this assignment. There's also value in networking. Networking, I mean, networking is this oops hang on one second networking this is the value of networking finding the right people and asking them the right questions so if you're undecided and you're exploring uh, as samuel was orthodontics dentists maybe marine biology find the right people and ask them the right questions these three things will happen if you do that, you'll have more confidence that you're on the right career path. You will build relationships that will open doors of opportunity. And I wanted to share with you a slide that we've used before. Actually, one more slide away. Now, as you network with people, you're going to have more luck if you find someone who has these three things. Linkage, interest, and ability. Linkage means that they have something in common with you. So let's use Whitley as an example. If you were to reach out to somebody that's in interior design, um, you could find them and, and, well, you have one thing in common, you're considering interior design, they might be in it. Maybe they went to school here, maybe they're a member of the church, okay? As you find these people then, you wanna find, do they have the interest and ability to help you? Networking connections with people who don't have any interest or ability are going to be a dead end. So find somebody that has these three things. Now, Steve Jobs said, this is a quote I've used before in this class, the only way to do great work is to love what you do, don't settle. Now, in a Forbes magazine article, uh, only 13% of American professionals love their jobs. That means 87% either just don't like it, they hate it, it's not their thing, right? Well, Find a passion, go after it, and you're going to be happier. You'll do better work if you love what you do, okay? So now I want to talk about what's going to happen to many of us, many of you, when you finish your education here at BYU-Idaho. You have a degree, and now you're saying, I want to get a job. Now for some of you, it's going to be BYU-Idaho, then you're going to go to professional school, and then you're going to find a job. Well, this is the reality that you're going to face. 80% of jobs that are open are not advertised. So why would somebody who has a hiring, they're hiring a position, why would they not advertise it to the world that they are hiring? Any ideas? Watching chat, listening as well. Why would someone not advertise a job that they're hiring for? Typically because they keep it within the company. Okay, within the company is a great one. They're networking. Um, I think that one of the big reasons is they go, they want more referrals. Yeah, like referrals. People. Yeah. Okay, yeah, perfect. Now, this, is, this, is, this next number is for a big time corporate company like Amazon or Adobe or Microsoft. When they do open a job, the average number of applicants is 250. 50% of the applications are never seen by the hiring manager. They're scanned with computer software. 13% is how many they're going to have the hiring manager see, and then they're going to interview three, typically. So what you're facing is your resume in a stack of a couple hundred and this reality. 
So what? Friends hire friends. Or they hire somebody that trusted friend has recommended. Okay? So what we want to teach our students at BYU-Idaho, and this is exactly what the law of light can do, you need to do these three steps to get a job. One, you should have a great resume and a LinkedIn profile. Two, you should network effectively. And three, still apply for jobs. But you're going to have more luck if you spend most of your time getting mentors by networking. So I'm going to tell this story really quickly. Who has seen Christopher Galbraith's talk? Anybody? In a class? It's shown in quite a few classes on campus. Anybody? Any takers on watching this talk? All right, so I'm going to tell you a story really quickly, okay? Christopher, when he was a junior at BYU-Idaho, he decides he wants to work on Wall Street. The more people he asked, the more he got this answer. Wall Street does not hire from BYU-Idaho. They hire from the Ivy League schools, Harvard, Dartmouth, Yale, Princeton, top-tier universities, also like Stanford or Berkeley. And he asked all of his professors here at BYU-Idaho, do you know anybody that works on Wall Street? He ended up with one name. And he said before he got too nervous, he bought a plane ticket to fly out to New York City to meet one person. Now, because he was a good networker, one turned into like three, but he didn't have any super solid appointments. He was just going to go out there to meet and work with people, to meet and network with people on Wall Street. So here's a really good question. So I want you guys to answer this. Let's pretend you're Christopher. You've landed in New York City. You're going to be there four total days. And you want to meet with 30 people, not three. How would you do it? What would you do to make that happen? Any ideas? I want you to think of linkage, interest, and ability. Spencer's got it. So I think he's probably seen the talk. Uh, he landed on Saturday. His first full day is Sunday. He went to church. So think about linkage interest ability. Everybody he goes to church with, he has something in common with. They're members of the church. So he asked the missionaries, point out to me everybody that walks into this congregation that works on Wall Street. And they pointed him out, and he just went up and introduced himself. Hi, my name is Christopher. I'm out here from BYU-Idaho. Can I meet with you just for 15 minutes this week in your office to learn about your career? He did that for two blocks of meetings. And for the next three days, he was racing all up and down lower Manhattan, talking with LDS professionals that worked on Wall Street. On that trip, he ended up with an invitation to interview for one job with Morgan Stanley. He interviewed, didn't get a job. He comes back to Rexburg, and he comes into my office. I said, Christopher, how did your trip go? He says, it went pretty well. I said, but he said, but I didn't, no job offers, no internships, but I did make some good connections. For the next four months, he prepares himself for a return trip, second trip to Wall Street. He flies out four months later. On trip two, he meets some of the same people. He introduces to others. On trip two, he is invited to interview for three jobs this time. J.P. Morgan again, Goldman Sachs, and Credit Suisse. On this trip, he ended up with three job offers. Um, so this is Briar Carlisle, okay? Briar watched Christopher's talk at Power to Become. Am I hiding his face? There's Briar, okay. Uh, Briar came into my office on a Monday. Christopher gave his talk the Saturday before. Hey, wait, I need my charger. Can I get my charger back now? How do I get it back? Hurry, hurry, quick, quick. I'm gonna lose. Um, I just got a warning, my battery, like my computer's gonna run out of battery, which is crazy, it was at 50%. So if this meeting dies, I'm sorry, but my daughter's packing down a charger. Um, anyway, uh, Briar listens to the talk and then he comes into my office and he says, I want to do what Christopher did at Nike, Nike headquarters in Beaverton, Oregon. We got on LinkedIn and found four BYU Idaho alumni at Nike headquarters. We found seven more from BYU Provo. Christopher coached him and he ended up getting a job offer uh, at Nike and he's now working at Nike headquarters. So as I've told you this story, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Any ideas? I mean, sometimes you got to be willing to 
I mean, just get out there. Like he bought a plane ticket, you know, yeah. that's 200 bucks out of his pocket. He had to do it again before he saw any sort of, right. you know, reward. I see a little bit cynical and say they are a good star gig ahead. Like there's less of a chance you're going to fail if you're a straight white man than if you're a girl who looks different. Like, let's just say that, like, yeah, like, for someone like me to do that, it would not work nearly as well or have as high of a success rate ever. Yeah. So, like, that's my problem with these conversations is they focus on white male crack pro energy and not, you know, other stuff. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, and I, I can promise you, sadly, if we're living this in my own life right now, life isn't fair always. Um, I told you a couple of weeks ago that uh, our family's dealing with some challenges. Um, I'll give you just a little hint. It's difficult being, I never would have guessed this, it's difficult being an African-American person in Southeast Idaho. Um, I have a son who's six foot four and African-American in a town where he's the only black kid in his school. And he experiences racism every single day from LDS members in Rexburg, Idaho, South Sugar City, Idaho. Um, it's not awful, but sometimes it is. And we just deal with it. So hopefully we can change that a little bit. So great points. Well, what, we, what this is, is what we call networking through the informational interview. And what I want to tell you is this is networking, finding the right people and asking them the right questions. Now, Christopher came out to BYU-Idaho and spoke a second time at Power to Become. And I had lunch with them and I said, Christopher, I want you, I want to make sure that I'm telling your story right. And he says, not only are you telling it right, but you have one of the names right. So he goes out to New York City and I'm just going to summarize some of these. He knew what the information he wanted. He wanted to know about Wall Street. He made connections to the church. He made appointments. Um, let me ask you really quickly. Do you guys see my slide? Because I'm, I have half of it hidden by the chat box. You guys see the whole slide? Okay, good. Uh, anyway, he knew what he wanted. He was professional. He was prepared. He didn't ask for a job. We remind people not to do that. He goes to church on Sunday. The missionaries introduce him to Bob. Bob works at Credit Suisse. He says, can I meet with you this week? Bob says, yes. Christopher spends 15, 20 minutes in Bob's office. The interview, the session goes great. Christopher's got great questions. Bob's got good answers. Bob seems happy to help. Bob goes back to his really busy job in New York City, and Christopher comes back to Rexburg. Whose job is it to make sure, how long is it going to take? I'll say it this way. How long is it going to take until Bob forgets Christopher? Maybe a week, two days, Michael says. Joshua says a week. It's not going to take long. So this is the most important question. Whose job is it to make sure that Bob doesn't forget Christopher? Thank you. It is Christopher's job. So this is exactly what Christopher did. Bob says to Christopher, and I'll do this quickly so we're not taking too much time. Bob says to Christopher, you should meet Jim. What does Christopher do? He goes and meets Jim. He then returns and reports to Bob. Bob says to Christopher, you should read this book or visit this webpage or say hello to my friend back in Rexburg or join this group. Whatever Bob suggests to Christopher, Christopher does. And he returns and reports to Bob. Four months later, when Christopher returns to his second trip, he and Bob have been corresponding for the last four months in a very natural way. And Bob sees that Christopher is listening He's trying, he's following his advice. And on trip two, he's even more prepared to do what he's trying to do. Bob takes Christopher down to the HR office at Credit Suisse and says, this is Christopher, 
please take his resume. I want him on my team. Now, when we talk about the, law, the art of inquiry, these are the questions that Christopher asked when he was in New York City. Now, as he's doing this, he's doing two things. Number one, he's making a judgment. Does Bob have linkage, interest, and ability? If Bob has all three, especially he can tell that Bob is interested in him and has the ability to help, Christopher's going to cultivate that relationship. Some people, Christopher walked out of their office and said, nope, not that interested in helping me. But for others, he did. Now, these are the questions. And as he's asking these questions, he's taking notes. How can I naturally follow up with Bob so I can develop a relationship? How did you get involved at Credit Suisse? What advice would you give me? What do you love about what you do? Where did you go to school? Where did you study? What do you love to do outside of work? What inspires you? What books have you read? Where do you see yourself in the future? Uh, anything I can do for you? And the most important networking question, I've separated it out. Who else do you know I should be talking to? You should talk to Jim. You should read that book. Oh, we both love the Boston Red Sox. It gives you a reason to stay in touch with Bob. And so this process, because it's just a name, on LinkedIn maybe, or at church or wherever, you make a connection, but because Christopher was good at doing the informational interview, they become friends and friends hire friends. Boom, there you go. Now, if you wanna get into this, you can watch these three things. I just put them up here for your reference, not any kind of an assignment of anything. BYUI.edu forward slash P2B is the first talk. You can watch it there. We created a little video where Christopher coaches students on how to do this. And then the, third, the second talk that he gave is on about how to win the interview. Okay. Now, here are a couple of examples of personal key document part two. We're on part two. The first one is identify, and there's no set number. It could be just one. But identify a mentor, and you're going to go out and visit with that mentor. Just visit with them. Ask them a question. It could be what you're dealing with, what your a problem that you have. And just record in a, a two or three a paragraph the advice you got from your mentor or mentors. Okay? The second one is you're going to create a list of a, a board of advisors. So the idea here is if you had a problem that you're dealing with, a question, a concern, a challenge. If you could assemble anybody around a table in your, in, for you, who would you have around the table? For me, my board includes my wife, my children, my mission president, my mom and dad, uh, my Uncle Wells, okay? That's who I'd have, and the savior. That's who I'd have around my table. And don't just have a, a you know, don't, don't, don't just list, Here's my five people. Write a sentence or two about why they're on your board. Why is, in this example, why is Karen on my board? Why is Susan on my board? Why is uh, the Colonel on my board? Okay, here we go. Example two, mentor is, is, is this person's dad. Board of advisors, chairman, Heavenly Father Jesus Christ, they share a seat, Joseph Smith, mom and dad, Melissa, Kyle Black. Kyle Black is a religion teacher here on campus. Gordon B. Hinckley, Jeffrey R. Holland. Okay, so who's on your board? List them and list why. Okay, that is it. Now, I'm going to give you, this semester, you're going to have three extra credit assignments. Here's extra credit assignment one, and it is not part of the syllabus, a part of the class, okay? We have a new tool. I'm going to share my screen. I can do this. Google launch screen. Okay, hang on. Desktop. No, nope, not that one. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Okay, it says BYU Zoom up here. Okay, what I want you to do, and this is a really great tool that, uh, and, and the extra credit assignment is just this, you get 10 extra credit assignment points if you do one simple thing, create a profile on BYUI Connect. And all you have to do in the meeting, in the class meeting report, 
Up in that top box where it says attended, all you have to do is say, I created my, extra, I created my BYUI Connect profile. And then I'm gonna give you 10 extra points, okay? So follow me here. You go to BYUI, www.byuiconnect.com. So byuiconnect.com. Hit enter and it's going to bring up this website, okay? Now, you will have a button that says join today, okay? Uh, and it's gonna ask you to sign in with your BYU Idaho credentials. Uh, for me, I've already signed in, so I'm just gonna log in, and it's gonna sign in here through institution ID, and I'm BYU Idaho. I sign, I mean, go tell them that they need to, tell them I, I can hear them. All right, so it's gonna sign in. Now, what BYUI Connect does is it gives you access to all sorts of people. Now, this is what's cool about this, is you can all join the BYU-Idaho community, but you could also join BYU Connect, BC Connect, or BYU-H-Ohana Network. So let's use Whitley as an example. I keep picking on you, but you're right next to me on this picture screen, and you were brave enough to talk. Let's say she gets super serious about interior design. Well, guess what? BYU-Idaho doesn't offer interior design anymore. We used to, but we don't. So you could say, well, does BYU, does BC, does BYU-BYU connect, or BYU-Hawaii? Uh, and you may say, well, I can still do whatever here. Well, I can go out and I can explore the BYU-Idaho community, and I can explore the BYU-Idaho community, where'd it go, sinking? I can explore the BYU Idaho community and find people by majors or industry or location. Uh, let's just do a major. Let's do accounting because I know we have some accounting people on it. If I apply that, then there's going to be 154 people on this community in accounting. Well, let's say, oh, I have Preston. I want to reach out and find a new mentor. Preston could be my new mentor. I click on his page, and I have a way here. I can either send him a message right here. Send a message by hit Let's Connect. I can send him a message, or I can request a meeting. Now, I just this is 100% just introducing you to BYUI Connect. So your only assignment, and you don't have to do this if you don't want to do it at all, would be to go in and create your profile right here. Boom, my profile. It'll just take you five minutes. I'm not expecting you to make it huge. I'm not expecting you to, you know, do more than just a little bit of it. Sign up, create your profile. On the class meeting report, just say, signed up for BYUI Connect, and I'll give you 10 extra points. Now, here's the blessing of extra credit. Most of you, the way this class is going, most like 95% of this class is like got A's anyway. So the extra credit is probably not going to make or break your grade, but if for some reason you miss an assignment, uh, it will help you in the end. Okay, any questions on that? So quick review for this week. Uh, Personal creed document has two kind of subparts. Part one, advice from a mentor. Part two, your board of advisors. Uh, the case study work is the group work this week. Uh, and then the class meeting report lesson evaluation. If you do the extra credit, just put signed up for BYUI Connect in the class meeting report, that top box, and I will give you 10 extra points. All right. Any questions that anybody has? We're bumping up on 30 minutes. I want to make sure we end on time. Any questions? Let me open up chat in case I'm missing something. So, Melanie, the question is just again on that last assignment of each week in that top box, just simply write, signed up for BYUI Connect, and I'll give you the extra credit points. Okay, any other questions before we sign off? All righty, I'll stay on for a few minutes if anybody has a question. If not, we'll see you next week. And uh, next week is my, well, one of my favorite class meetings. We're gonna play a game. 
I think it's really fun. So whatever, just a heads up. All right. Thank you all. And we will see you next week.